Hello, and wherever you're watching us from, we want to welcome you very, very warmly to the CBS Family Service today. My name is Reverend Kwame Ribadiri. I'll be the moderator for the day, and we have a wonderful service lined up for you today. Our service is going to have a very special message after our time of worship. Our guest speaker today is here for the very first time, Deacon Esther Chengo. She's a member of the Deacon Board here at Christ is the Answer Ministries, and she has something to say about preparing Christian, especially Christian citizens of Kenya for the upcoming national elections. But we must start with worship, and we're delighted to have our worship leader, Pastor Peter. And as you can see, we have a few extra faces on board today. We're delighted to welcome new members to the CBS worship team. So Pastor Peter, why don't you introduce them and then take us away into worship today. Thank you very much, Rev. Amen. Yes. And as you can see, our team has grown. So let me just take this opportunity to introduce to you our new members. Also with our old members, they will just introduce themselves. Welcome. Amen. My name is Esther Nduta from Sitam Thika Town. Great. And I am Elaine Masharia from Sitam Kikuyu. I am Lucy Jerry from Sitam Thika Road. I am Maureen Winnie from Sitam Rongai. Cliff Nyakundi, Sitam Karen. And I am Phil Muduri from Sitam Thika Road. Yes, and at, uh, the band here, we have Dave from Valley Road, and we also have Paul, the guitarist from uh, Sitam Kikuyu, and our very own brother Nyati from Woodley. And then we have on the bass guitar, Steve from Sitam Thika Road, and our very own Fungi drums there, Eliaza from Sitam Thika Road. And in case you don't know, I'm also Peter Mchombu from Sitam Thika Road. So we can just uh, join us in worshiping and praising God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, Tim.
praise him. He's worthy. Amen. Come on, brother. Come on. Put your hands together, Jesus. You are worthy of my praise, worthy of my worship, Lord. I give you all the glory and adoration. You are worthy of my praise, worthy of my worship, Lord. I give you all the glory, honor, adoration. You are worthy of my praise, worthy of my worship, Lord. I give you all the glory and adoration. You are worthy of my praise. Lord, I give you all the glory. Come on, everybody. Lord, I give you all that glory and adoration. Lord, I give you all that glory, honor, adoration. You are worthy of my hey. praise, worthy of my worship. Lord, I give you all the glory, hey. honor, adoration. Hey. When all is said and done, uta baki aku amu. When all is said and done, uta baki aku amu. When all is said and done, uta baki aku amu. Tabaki, I'm going to go. 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 Tabaki, I'm
Worship God. Worship Him. your hands and say, it's my worship. It's my worship. All of my worship. This is my worship. Hallelujah. All of my worship. It's my worship. It's my worship. Yes, Lord. All of my worship.
receive my worship, all of my worship. Come on, worship Him, my God. Worship Him, worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. And a presence quite like this With you I'm satisfied Oh Lord, with you I'm satisfied Yeah Every tear and all my pain Yes, in your presence washed away you are glorified, oh Lord. You are glorified. Somebody say, there's no, there's no greater place than a presence quite like this. Than a presence quite like this. With you I'm satisfied. With you I'm satisfied. glorify the Lord. Let's lift our voices. Let him know that we adore him. Let him know that we are indeed pleased to worship. We desire to give him the glory. He is glorified in our lives. He's glorified in our relationships. He's glorified in this place. Wherever you are, just lift your hands and join us as we sing that the glory belongs to him. He is the Lord who reigns. He reigns over circumstances. He reigns over our needs. He reigns over our nations. We give him the glory for he is indeed worthy. Oh, we bless you, Lord God. We worship you, Heavenly Father. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus as we worship this morning, as we worship you at this time, as we come into your holy presence, we acknowledge that there is no other God beside you. There is no one like you. And we worship you and give you thanks. Thank you, Lord God, for speaking to our hearts, for encouraging us, 
even those among us who have been heavy burdened today, even those who are shouldering many needs, oh Father, we thank you that your glory still shines forth and you are able to reveal yourself to us. We're praying, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, if there is anyone who is sick, anyone who is unwell under the sound of my voice, that the glory of the Lord will invade that situation. The power of your spirit, oh God, would minister healing, would minister your intervention, that the glory may go to you. Oh, I just pray for everyone, oh God, who has experienced your touch, that they will open their mouths, they will raise their hands and bring glory and honor to your holy name. Lord God, as we continue in this service, we want to pray for all those who are in need of your intervention, we're in need of your touch. We're in need of your help. Whatever help that might be, oh God, we're praying that you'll move over their lives, move in their situations right where they are. Whatever that need might be, you're tuned in today because the Spirit of God has led you to join with us in worship. And as you've worshiped, God has visited your situation. And so, Lord, we want to say thank you. We want to continue to pray for our great nation, O oh Lord. And we thank you for all that you're doing here in Kenya. In the next less than 60 days, O oh Lord, we will come together to elect new leaders all across the nation at every level, O oh God, of leadership. And we're praying for great intervention, for great wisdom, for great peace. We're praying that your man, your woman, O oh Lord, whoever it might be at every level of leadership may come into the position of leadership and responsibility and will honor you, our God, and will seek to glorify you. For blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us and we give you praise, honor, and glory as we continue this day to worship and glorify you. Amen, amen. Thank you, worship team. Let's do that chorus just one more time. You are glorified. We crown you Lord of Lords. We crown you Lord of Lords. You are glorified. You are glorified. Oh Lord. You are glorified. You reign, you reign upon your throne. You reign upon your throne. Your mercy. Your mercy. Just put some clap emojis in the chat wherever you are. Just honor the Lord and join with us as we give glory to God today. Worship team, we are so grateful for all of you. You sounded fantastic. And indeed, you ushered in the presence of the Lord in all we've done today. The Lord bless you and thank you once again. We thank God for this amazing worship team under the leadership of Pastor Peter today. And I know that you've been blessed. Please, if you have the link with you, pass it on to others. Someone else might want to just enjoy not just the worship, but also the word to us today. What a great time we've had today. Remember, our hashtag today is do your part. Do your part. So if you're listening to us on Hope uh, FM, if you're watching on Hope TV, or even if you're watching on our CTM Church Online platforms, remember to use that hashtag, do your part. Great welcome to our friends in Namibia, in America, in Romania, and in East Timor. We're so glad that you've joined us. You're still a part of our Sitam family, and we're always thrilled to hear from you. So please put a chat in there and say, yes, I'm watching from Namibia, or I'm listening to you all the way in East Timor, uh, and it'll be a blessing to us. You know, you can always subscribe to this channel so that you're always reminded about the fact that we are on Air. So please do so. Uh, hit the notification uh, bell as well so that you will be reminded whenever we have a service to share with you. Remember, the hashtag once again, if you're tweeting today, if you're posting something on Instagram is do your part. We'll be welcoming our speaker today in a few moments, Deacon Esther Chengo. Uh, she'll be sharing a great lesson on the responsibility of Christian citizens to fulfill our civic duty to glorify God and of course to elect leaders that will serve the people as they serve the Lord. Well, you've reached that time when we want to share a little bit about what we do here at CETAM and what's going on in the church world and in the church life. So please stay tuned for these announcements.
We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or for those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook, and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion, where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m., broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM, and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before or even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. Planning to get married? We encourage all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly with the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services. Seating capacity is no longer limited, but all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. Thanks for paying attention to these notices. God bless you, and please enjoy the rest of the service. Sitam Missions Department has been running medical camp since May, themed Perfecting Health, Radiating His Glory. So far, we have successfully completed work in Archer's Post. Your giving and prayers made that possible. We're trusting God for the subsequent ones. Our next stop being Marsabit, Gororukesa and Matarba combined from the 7th to the 10th of June. A big thank you to the 50 missioners already registered for this station and we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We request volunteer medics and missioners to register for the remaining camps according to your preferred mission stations on the given dates. Kargi, the 20th to the 25th of June. All Turot and Loyangalani camps will be done concurrently from the 12th to the 16th of September. Thank you for your generous giving. We are currently receiving donations in kind and medical supplies for the task ahead. Partner with us today through the pay bill number 693371. Account Medical Camp. Call 0709-861-165 during working hours for inquiry or email mission at sitem.org for more information and donations. Give your donation in any Sitam assembly near you. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. We are so grateful for your generosity over the many, many months that we've been on CBS Family Service. And I must say on behalf of our presiding bishop, a big, big thank you. Sidam has been able to do so much more uh, even despite the difficult times of COVID and now as we are getting back into uh, in-person worship, we still see the great goodness of God in your support and your giving to the ministry. We want to prepare our hearts to give. In a few moments, you'll receive uh, some instructions in a clip, but allow me to just pray for you as we prepare to give. Father, in the name of Jesus, how grateful we are for everything you've given to us. You've blessed our lives beyond measure, and we're grateful to continually respond to you by giving of ourselves and giving of the substance you've entrusted to us. We pray your blessing upon every gift and every giver to the glory and honor of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please watch this clip for instructions on how to give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. 
Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at Sidom. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITM pay bill numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. Thank you so much for paying attention to all the announcements and for your generosity in giving to the work here at CETA. Well, it's now time to hear from God and to hear the word of God, which uh, the Lord has placed on a good friend of ours and who is on CBS for the very first time. As I've already mentioned, Deacon Esther Chengo is a member of our Deacon Board here at Christ is the Answer Ministries. She's also attending our fellowship and assembly in Embakasi. Those of you in Nairobi will know exactly where that is. But she'll be dealing with the subject of the church as participant. And if you've been with us over the last couple of weeks, you know that we've been going through a study in the church and politics, particularly because here in Kenya, we will very shortly be going into a period of a general election. And we want to speak to Christian citizens about their role, their responsibility uh, as participants in their civic duty to the glory of God. And so Pastor Pastor Deacon, <laughs> Deacon Esther Chengo. She may be a pastor soon, her dad is, but uh, she may be a pastor soon. Welcome to CBS. Thank you. We are honored to have you. Thank and, you. And uh, we're delighted that you have agreed to share with us on this important topic of how the church or members of the church can actually become participants. I'm sure this is an important thing that we need to be doing or thinking about and praying over as Christians, but what do you think the most important, if you were to take just one point from your message today, what would that one point that you want us to take home uh, as viewers, as Christians today would be? I think we must act. Mm. Not only must we act, but the Lord demands it of us to do that. Wonderful. Therefore, we must take every opportunity mm. availed to us to do that which the Lord desires for us to do. Wonderful which is to act. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, you heard it from uh, Aprecia herself. Act. If you want to uh, follow any of the points or highlight them in the chat, please do so. Remember that our hashtag today is do your part. Deacon Chengo, all yours. Thank you very much, Reverend Kwame, for that uh, warm introduction. Good morning, church, and praise God. It is an honor and a privilege to bring to you God's word this day. And I am grateful to God and to the church leadership for this opportunity. The sermon today is drawn from a series that we have been looking at across CETAM titled The Role of the Church in Politics. This is the seventh topic in this series and we will focus our reflections today on the church as participant. We live in a world that has lost its voice. We can easily call it the emoji pandemic, a world that has devised a set of images commonly referred to as emojis and caricatures that are commonly referred to as GIF, GIFs, that have been used to capture the emotions of society. If we're feeling happy, we put a smiling face on our messages. If we're feeling sad, we put a gloomy face on our messages and on and on. 
Among the plethora of these emojis are a set of common triplets that we call the three wise monkeys. They have their hands on their face. The first monkey uses its hands to cover its eyes. The second monkey uses its hands to cover its ears. And the third monkey uses its hands to cover its mouth. Thus, the three refer to the common adage, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. These three wise monkeys find their origin in ancient Japanese culture, where the original meaning was that people should not listen to, look at, or say anything bad. Literally, it was an instruction to avoid bad behavior. However, this expression is now often used to mean to ignore bad behavior by pretending not to hear it or to see it. It is now generally used sarcastically against those who, through selfishness or cowardice, choose to ignore some wrongdoing. Could it be that as a church, we are mirroring the actions of the world around us? That we have deliberately chosen to remain blind, deaf, and dumb to the world around us, refusing to acknowledge that which surrounds us because of selfishness or cowardice? Have we as a church lost our ability to see the world as Christ saw it, when he looked and had compassion on the crowds? Have we as a church lost our ability to hear the cries of God's people as God prompted Moses to do? When at the burning bush, the Lord told Moses, I have heard the cries of my people. Have we as a church lost our ability to speak out speaking as the voice of God to a generation that needs to hear the words of the Lord, let my people go. Today, we draw our attention to a critical topic, and the topic is the church as a participant. When thinking through today's reflection, I thought of what a newspaper title would be if this was to be an article therein. Probably one newspaper would term it a hat for the world. Maybe another would term it called for more. Another would have titled it moved by love. And probably a tabloid would title it demand notice. And all of this would be right because for a participant church, it is a church that is called for more, moved by love, and has a heart for the world. Let us read together the letter in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1 to verse 14. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive, to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. This happened after Jeconiah, the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, verse 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters to your husbands, to the husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters, that you may be increased there and not diminished. And ask, seek the peace of the city 
where I have caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. Verse 10. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. I will be found by you, says the Lord, verse 14, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. Let us begin by looking at the participants in this letter. We see five key persons. The first, Jeremiah. He was an Israelite priest who lived and worked in Jerusalem. He was called as a prophet to warn Israel about the severe consequences of breaking their covenant with God through idolatry and injustice. He even predicted that the empire of Babylon would come as God's servant to bring judgment on Israel by destroying Jerusalem and taking the people into exile. Sadly, we see this prediction being fulfilled in 2 Kings chapter 24 and 25, where Babylon attacks and destroys Jerusalem and Judah. The second participant, the elders. They are further defined as the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Let me narrow this down to the religious leaders. And when we narrow down, we see that some of the prophets had turned into false prophecy. In fact, they were speaking what the itching ear desired to hear. They prophesied falsely to the Israelites in the name of the Lord, yet God had not sent them. In fact, false prophets spoke about the exile period being a brief period. And Jeremiah chapter 28 talks of one particular prophet called Hananiah, who declared that Babylon's yoke would be destroyed in two years, yet God had declared that it would be a period of 70 years of captivity. We also see the children of Israel. They had broken their covenant with God and had violated it by adopting the worship of all kinds of Canaanite gods, taking up idol worship and even child sacrifice. There was rampant social injustice where the vulnerable members of community the widows, the orphans, and the immigrants were all being taken advantage of. The third participant, the rulers. We see Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Can you imagine that? Nebuchadnezzar as God's servant? It is interesting that the Lord would use the kings of this world as his servants to do his bidding. In this case of this text, God used Nebuchadnezzar to be his tool of judgment. The second king we see as a ruler is Jeconiah. In fact, we see Jeconiah the king, we see the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah, and Jerusalem. At this time, Israel's priests, kings, and leaders were corrupt. In fact, Jeconiah took over as king from his father when he was only 18 years old. And he reigned in Jerusalem for three months. 
And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done, which was equally evil. The third category in this particular space of rulers are the workforce, the craftsmen and smith. They are mentioned in this text. They were carried away to exile and were not spared when God's wrath came upon the city of Jerusalem. Politics and economy go hand in hand. Thus, the evil and corruption by those in the political sphere disrupted the lives of those in the workforce directly, as they were among those who were captured as slaves by the Babylonians. The fourth participant, the sons. We see two sons particular, particularly mentioned. We see Elasa and Gemariah. They had to be key and trustworthy confidants of Jeremiah for them to have been entrusted with the task of delivering this letter. They are listed as sons, and you can estimate that they must have been youthful for them to have been messengers. Thus, we can deduce that the youth were involved in the relaying of this key message, the message of hope in the midst of judgment to the people of Israel. The fifth and last participant, the Lord of hosts. In the text, we see a reference three times to really make it clear in the mind and the heart of the recipient of the letter that it is the Lord who is speaking. He is identified twice as the Lord of hosts the God of Israel. And the third time, he is identified as the Lord. The Lord allowed for the Israelites to be exiled to Babylon. His hand was behind the captivity. One may wonder, why would God allow his people to be held captive? Is God so merciless? But Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7 responds adequately to this. The Lord says, I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. However, against this backdrop of judgment, we see an act of restorative grace by the Lord. In fact, this chapter 29 is right in the middle of the whole book of Jeremiah. And it does signify a turning point from a judgment tone to a tone of hope that the Lord is willing to extend mercy in the midst of exile. Although God had banished them, he had not given up on them. The punishment of 70 years had to be fulfilled. However, the Lord begins to restore them. God is saying, although his chastisement still holds, he will still watch over his people who will obey his word. Let us move to the message of the letter. This letter has a twofold message for its recipients. The first message is a call to action. And the second message is a message of hope. So let's begin by looking at the call to action. The Lord called the children of Israel to various kinds of action. The first kind of action we see is economic action. It is economic action that they may prosper in the land of their captivity. God is interested in the basic needs of his people. He says, build houses and dwell in them. The Lord says, plant gardens and eat their fruit. The second action is societal action. He says this, that they may increase in numbers. God is interested in the numerical growth of his people. He says, take wives and beget sons and daughters. He says, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. The Lord is also interested in spiritual action by his people. And in this, we see two angles. 
The first is that there may be peace even in captivity. God is interested in the peace of all of mankind. The Lord says, seek the peace of the city. He says, pray to the Lord for it. The second angle is that there may be spiritual maturity. God is interested in his people knowing his voice. He says, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams, which you cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. The second message for the recipients, the first was a call to action, and the second is a message of hope. The Lord assures that there will be restored relationships. God is interested in reconciling with his people. And we hear the Lord saying this. He says, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you. You will call upon me and, and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord. And I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive. So, I wonder what the Lord is saying to you. For me, I hear the Lord saying, we must act. The exile of the children of Israel was as a result of inaction by the children of Israel, as they chose not to speak out against the evil rulers of their day. They chose to keep silent or even to propagate the social injustices against the less fortunate in their society. They chose to probably hide in the cocoon of their jobs as wealthy smiths and craftsmen, choosing economic umbrellas to hide under the scorching heat of the misdemeanor of the ruling class. It is this lack of action, the lack of engagement, the lack of speaking out, that the Lord is saying, this is what led to the evil being propagated and thus led to the downward spiral of society. As I conclude this morning, I pray that we will not be a church of the three monkeys, a church that remains aloof and in a cocoon. Let it not be said that we see no evil, hear no evil, or speak no evil. May we stand up as salt and light of the world. May we arise with the compassion of Christ for the souls that are lost. May we take our position and impact the world in which God has planted us in. From today, may our families and our neighborhoods, our schools and our businesses, our workplaces and our cities and our country feel the impact of the church as a participant. At this particular point, I don't know what you're going through. You could be in a situation of exile, like the children of Israel, and are praying that the Lord may restore you through this situation. My prayer for you, is that God may restore your relationships with him and with his people. You may have found yourself as a lone voice, just like Jeremiah, speaking out against the evil of the day. There may be a lot of false prophets in the land. Do not be discouraged. I pray that the Lord will be with you, that the Lord will confirm his word through you. So at this point, church, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called us, called us to participate, called us to engage, 
called us to be involved. And we pray that you will help us to hear that call for more. You will help us that we will be desirous to be moved by love. And you will help us that we will long to have compassion, that we will long to have a heart for the world around us. Help us, dear Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let me welcome back Reverend Kwame to continue with the rest of the service. God bless you. God bless you too, uh, Dick and Esther. It was so good to hear from you. And thank you for all those very, very practical issues on encouraging us to act in this season. God bless you. And we look forward to hearing from you again. Thank you very Amen. much. Amen. Amen. We are truly blessed to have had your company to hear and participate in this wonderful worship experience we've had together here on CBS Family Service today. Please share your experience. Share it with us, your thoughts, your takeaways in the chat section below. And also share this link with others who you believe will be blessed by this message. A lot of people around the world and perhaps even your friends uh, would like to hear what the Lord has said through Deacon Esther today. Please join us on Tuesday when on Hope FM, Hope TV, and Sidham Church Online uh, and Facebook and YouTube channels, we will share in the After Sunday Live experience. Just going through this message, all the points that have been shared, answering your questions, and also sharing your comments too. And then join us on Wednesday. We come together live on the air uh, every Wednesday at 6, uh, 6 p.m. East African time to pray together, to just bring your requests and the requests of many others here uh, to the Lord in prayer. So do join us on Wednesday at 6 o'clock East African time. And please keep sharing your feedback, keep tweeting, keep sharing on Instagram, and keep using the hashtag for today, do your part. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, and you've prayed the prayer of faith, we'd like to ask you to get in touch on the WhatsApp numbers on the screen below, uh, and somebody will get back in touch with you to help you to know exactly what you've done and what steps to take next as you go forward in your walk of faith. Once again, thank you so much to all of the ones who uh, participated in our service today, our speaker, Esther Chengo, to our worship led by Pastor Peter, uh, the entire team, the entire crew that puts all of this together. We are so grateful to God for all of you. Now, if you'll join me and stand, if you can, if you're in a position to do so, as we uh, share in the words of the grace and ending our time together today. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all forevermore. Amen.